Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. We're just butting up against this level here. We need to turn that old resistance into new support. And if I were to isolate, let's call it everything from the tops of wicks to the bottoms of tails here on the Bitcoin chart, you guys can see we've already entered that zone. So we're still, uh, well, pretty much waiting for Bitcoin. This has been the story for the entire crypto space for the last several months, just waiting for Bitcoin to make that move. And then the rest of the market, well, is suspected to follow. So Bitcoin right now, as of the time of this recording, we are trading in and around. We're just down uh, just a little under this zone here, 63000 almost $500 per coin. We need to get up above that $65,100 mark to transform this trend and turn it bullish. So we're butting up against this level in here, as you guys can see, but we really do have to pierce through this uh, to confirm bullish momentum. We're getting very, very close though, guys. You know, it's been a very long time. This Bitcoin trend has just been, uh, well, descending pretty much for the last six months, almost six months now, uh, or has it been even over six months, maybe even over six months uh, at this point. You know, newbie traders are getting impatient. And if, uh, you know, this isn't your first bull run, you're probably just waiting for that next spike to the upside. Now, neutral sentiment has not changed. We're still sitting at 51. Market cap is at $2.23 trillion. 24-hour volume, that is down a little bit to $68.94 billion. Bitcoin dominance holding at 56.3. Not a lot of movement in the crypto sector. We're seeing a mix of green and red. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm feeling like a lot of these uh, altcoins, I mean, we have seen uh, significant gains for some of these altcoins over the last seven days. As you guys can see, we have uh, started to make an ascent. So if you look at the seven day column, you can see a lot of these altcoins have been gaining quite significantly over the last seven days. Ethereum up 13.9%, BNB coin uh, also up 10.9% almost 11% there. Solana is up 10.3. So uh, double digits for some of the top 10. Even Cardano is up 10.6%. Uh, Avalanche up 14.7. Um, and look at that, near protocol, 27.26% in the last seven days. So some of these cryptocurrencies have seen uh, significant gains. Wow, look at Tau, number 23, 86.7% in the last seven days. Guys, it's starting to feel a lot like the euphoria phase, I got to say. Um, you know, it's it's slowly creeping in. Of course, you know, when we do really hit that euphoria stride, we're going to see a lot of these cryptocurrencies really start to move to the upside in large batches. So, guys, this is just the beginning. It's all going to be about Bitcoin, though. Bitcoin first, then we're going to see the rest of the market rally. If you guys remember back uh, before March, how this felt... You guys remember how this felt? Well, we've got to get that feeling coming back again before we start to see some of these other coins really kind of catch their stride. Let's look at XRP, guys. XRP trading at point, well, it was trading at 0.589 just a few minutes ago. Now we're at 0 0.5876. Uh, so XRP just kind of sitting in that zone here, uh, trading on low volume, waiting for just poised, ready for the rest of the market so that it can follow and take on its share of this market cap. I got to keep reminding you guys that XRP is a special cryptocurrency this bull run. And when you compare that to former bull runs, well, I think we can see why. Michael Branch here bringing this to our attention. So Grayscale just tweeted this out again. If you guys remember a few weeks ago, Grayscale did launch their XRP Trust. I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago, and I will link that up here if you guys didn't catch it. I'm finding it interesting how they're promoting their product. Okay, so Grayscale says XRP Trust will give investors exposure to a protocol with real world use cases. Guys, this is how Grayscale is framing the XRP Trust. So recall that Grayscale relaunched the XRP Trust earlier this month, allowing only accredited investors to gain direct exposure to XRP. That's another interesting thing here. Uh, the barriers to entry, you have to be an accredited investor. Since its inception, Grayscale has been highlighting numerous benefits of the product, including detailing a four-phase growth cycle that could eventually transform the product into a spot-based crypto ETF. So with regards to the product specifically, it seems as though uh, they have plans to grow it. We believe Grayscale XRP Trust gives investors exposures to a protocol with an important real-world use case. So guys, this is what Grayscale tweeted out just yesterday. The real world use case, framing XRP in that way, deciding to make that choice. And I think that's, uh, well, first very strategic, but also very, very promising for the XRP cryptocurrency. I mean, if these guys are saying, look, you know, XRP is not just a Pepe coin, not just a Doge coin, not just, uh, you know, not just uh, another one of those 99% of cryptocurrencies out there. It is a cryptocurrency with real world utility. And so now we've got an institutional name behind this claim. I think that bodes well for us XRP holders. So in a recent statement, Grayscale's head of product 
Uh, Rehan Sharif Askari stated that the XRP Trust would give accredited investors direct exposure to a protocol that has a significant real-world use case. According to the CEO, according to Grayscale's head of product, XRP can transform the global financial infrastructure by facilitating cross-border payments that are completed in seconds. So he gave that statement there. And just yesterday, here's the tweet. Just yesterday, Grayscale did tweet this out. Uh, we believe the Grayscale XRP Trust gives investors exposure to a protocol with an important real-world use case. So they're looking out for their investors. You know, when we when we tease this apart, we just have to look at how they're wording it, okay? They want to give their investors, okay, remember, their reputation is on the line here. They want to give their investors exposure to an important cryptocurrency with a real-world use case. So what I'm saying here, guys, what I'm suggesting is that Grayscale really does see the long-term potential for XRP. They're not just in this for the, uh, you know, for the quick turnaround, although, uh, I mean, it was a very convenient time for them to launch this product. But, you know, it is interesting. We are learning more and more as the days go on. Uh, down here, Grayscale also did add to their tweet, available to, a bit, uh, to eligible accredited investors. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Past performance is not indicative of future. But then they do list the XRP Grayscale Trust link here in the description. So they're really promoting this. I think they do, uh, you know, see real world value for XRP. And this is why they're, uh, well, you know, it, it's all in the marketing. They know they've got something good and they want to promote it to investors. They want uh, institutional investors to buy this up, accredited investors, I guess I should say, to buy up this product. And guys, that just means more demand driven to XRP because they are going to have to purchase more XRP uh, in order to back the product once more investors decide to deploy more capital into this Grayscale product. So I wanted to thank Michael Branch for posting that. Uh, guys, the Wrath Economy also mentioning this, a report on tokenization by Market Sable, noting Ripple and Archax, okay, that partnership, a big deal. He posted the article here, okay, this is a real-world assets uh, tokenization report from uh, Market Sable. I thought it was Market Sable. It's actually marketsable.com, their quarter two 2024 report. And I will link this in the description of the uh, of the video for you guys. Uh, it discusses uh, more broadly the crypto industry and tokenization just uh, kind of as a whole, different kinds of uh, examples of that. Again, I will link it in the description, but guys, check this out. They mentioned the Ripple and Archax connection here. Ripple has solidified its position in the real world asset tokenization landscape by expanding its partnership with Archax, a UK-related digital asset exchange, to bring hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real-world assets onto the XRP Ledger. This partnership was announced during XRP Ledger Apex 24 and is expected to significantly influence the future of RWA tokenization on the XRP Ledger. Archax will utilize XRP's built-in tokenization features, including its uh, decentralized exchange and compliance capabilities, to tokenize real-world assets from top financial institutions. This partnership reflects R uh, Ripple's broader strategy of positioning XRPL as the leading blockchain for institutional-grade tokenization and decentralized finance services. With the integration of features such as automated market makers, or AMMs, and decentralized identifiers, DIDs, Ripple aims to offer advanced functionality to financial institutions looking to tokenize assets. And if you guys don't remember, uh, I will link the video I did on the Archax uh, deal from a few months ago up here in the top right-hand corner. Graham Rodford, he famously said in this clip, and you guys can check it out if you want. Well, he was predicting, he was saying there basically that they could see, I think it was 30 to $50 trillion, something like that. That he predicts that that could be actually running uh, through uh, RWAs on the XRP ledger through Archax specifically. They also mentioned down here the acquisition of Medico in 2023 and how that played a critical role in laying the foundation for this expansion. This acquisition enabled Ripple to establish robust custody solutions for tokenized assets, ensuring that institutions could securely manage their tokenized RWAs. By leveraging XRP's decentralized infrastructure, Ripple is helping bridge the gap between traditional finance and blockchain-based solutions. This partnership also aims to expand the use of XRP, contributing to a slight uptick in the token's price following the announcement. So guys, all these features, all these little things here, they're going to contribute to XRP price moves. It's one of those things where, you know, every little bit counts. All the little things are going to help transform XRP, transform the ecosystem, and essentially drive more demand to the XRP cryptocurrency. So I wanted to thank Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. And because pretty much anybody can develop on it, uh, we are seeing some questionable activity, guys. This one coming from Dr. Archer here. There are unusual activities in the XRPL ecosystem that need attention. Transparency and integrity are vital. 
Uh, and the recent observations here suggest that uh, some practices might be artificially inflated metrics, potentially misleading those who rely on accurate data. So he noticed this, okay? Apparently, specifically the, the DexFi token, okay? Uh, and that's called Nex. That has around 50 holders, yet the Nex XRP liquidity pool is showing daily trading volume between 40 uh, 40,000 and $50,000 figures that are high given the limited number of holders in that liquidity pool. So you guys can see that here, 50%. Okay. Up near uh, $41,223. That is the volume. Uh, that is the volume listed here. Uh, so that is interesting considering the figures, uh, don't really add up. A group of wallets linked to DexFi source tag are generating a large number of transactions in this pool. Then he was noticing some other things uh, like down here in August, 47 wallets made uh, between 600 and 632 payment transactions relating to AMM trading. And one wallet made 2,284 deposits and withdrawals. In contrast, a typical DexFi user makes about three transactions per month. That is medium value. High activity wallets raise the average transactions uh, per user to about 28 per month, excluding, the, uh, excluding them brings it down to 16. So this does suggest that overall activity metrics may be skewed, potentially giving an inflated view of user engagement. So just be careful of that if you guys are using any of these products. He does continue on down here. Um, I think ultimately, though, it is a bit of a uh, public service announcement that Dr. Arthur, or rather the reason why he's mentioning this, don't be fooled, guys. I know there are going to be many use cases on the XRP Ledger, many different products that are going to be used uh, and many different reasons to use them. And all these companies, they're going to probably approach you. They're going to target, uh, they're going to target you. They're going to market to you saying, use our product for these reasons, this, that, and the other. Uh, you know, I try my best to, you know, look into these projects and see what, uh, what people are saying about them. Uh, and you, you know, we, we try to do our best to, to try to identify any scams in the space. Um, so not to say that this is a scam, but it is uh, interesting to note that they are maybe, uh, well, spoofing the volume here a little bit. There could be reasons for this. It could be, uh, you know, a test use case scenario that they're uh, trialing. Who knows, guys? Just be mindful. Anyway, wanted to thank Archer here for pointing that out. Uh, I also wanted to bring you guys this story here. So I got to ask you guys a question. Would you take XRP if there was a way to just take it? If you could log in somewhere and just take some XRP for free, would you do it? Well, guys, apparently you can. Yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? Mickey B. Fresh posting this a few years back. J uh, David Schwartz, okay, Joel Katz, CTO of Ripple, joined Charlie Schramm on an episode of his podcast called Untold Stories. Here are a couple of video clips. He talks a little bit about the creation of the XRP ledger and the uh, the process that him, uh, Jed McCaleb, Chris Larson, and uh, Arthur Brito, the process that they went through when creating the XRP ledger. It's an interesting story. But guys, I wanted to bring your attention to the latter part of the story, okay? I'm not going to play you guys the full thing because it's over uh, five or six minutes long, but I just wanted to show you guys this thing that David Schwartz tells Charlie Shrem here. Apparently, if you log into the original XRP ledger, which apparently anybody can do, you can get free XRP. He thinks there's still XRP in the account. Listen to this. Uh, so here's another funny, here's another hilariously funny bit. If you fire up the XRP ledger software yourself today and you don't connect it to the network, it will create a new Genesis ledger. It'll create a new blockchain from scratch. That's what it does if you don't tell it to do anything else. And there will be a hundred billion XRP in the sort of Genesis account and you can transfer it. The password is well known. I think it's master password. So it's like a, it's like a, the password generates a private key. You just use I'm master. It's master. My own XRP right now. You can. I my own XRP right now. You can. And here's, so this is the hilarious part. When we opened that ledger to the public um, during the beta, there was still money in the master account. No one had emptied it. Oh. So you can just connect to the software and just take XRP just the same way the founders did, the same way Ripple, you know, the same way the founders did. You could just take money out of that Genesis account. And people did. And they didn't, nobody emptied it. They just took like what they needed to experiment. And those people still have XRP today that they just took out of that Genesis account. What? You could just take XRP? Why have we been accumulating like schmucks? Why have we been using our hard-earned dollars to cost average down XRP when we could have just taken it for free? All right, I think that's what he was saying there, right? You guys heard that? You guys heard that correctly? I my own XRP right now. You can. Anyway, that is uh, new breaking news to me, at least. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, of course, you'd have to know how to do that. Um, but apparently the password is master password, guys. Tell me down in the comments if you can figure that out. Let me know. Anyway, moving along, but wanted to thank Mickey B. Fresh just for posting that. Marty Party here, guys, bringing this to our attention. So 
There has been a, a, a recent report here that BlackRock has amended their custody agreement with Coinbase. Now, this is important, okay? As detailed in the SEC filing, the amendment updates section 2.1 of a custodial service agreement. Uh, Coinbase custody must now process a withdrawal of digital assets to a public blockchain address within 12 hours of receiving instructions from the trust or its authorized representatives subject to the specific balance requirements. Now, the reason I find this interesting is because here's another take on this story from Bitcoin therapist. BlackRock amends the Coinbase custody agreement to require 12 hour withdrawals amid debt rumors. So modifications reflect BlackRock's efforts to enhance operational framework and improve liquidity among recent allegations. BlackRock has amended its custody agreement with Coinbase, updating op uh, operational procedures for its iShare Bitcoin Trust ETF, according to an SEC filing dated on September the 16th. The amendment to the Coinbase Prime Broker Agreement introduces changes aimed at improving withdrawal processes and asset management during unsettled trades. The modification shortened Coinbase's custody withdrawal process time when handling withdrawals from the vault balance to a public blockchain address. This sounds to me like they want to uh, streamline this operation in order to, uh, you know, pre uh, prevent a liquidity crunch. Down here, it also says these adjustments reflect BlackRock's efforts to enhance the operational framework of this BTC trust. I think they think that um, uh, more institutions are going to be investing in Bitcoin or their Bitcoin product. And therefore, they need to be able to have a robust framework in order to, uh, well, offer flexibility in managing assets during unsettled trades. The firm aims to improve liquidity and access for institutional investors. So guys, I think this is, uh, you know, a sign that BlackRock is uh, is saying, look, this is going to get really crazy, really, really fast. And, uh, you know, I may maybe we should be expecting this in quarter four, 2024, certainly throughout 2025. So they have now amended this uh, this agreement that they have with Coinbase. I thought that was interesting. On top of this, guys, from Crypto Tank, he's brought up a couple of threads here that I wanted to go through with you guys. Understanding payments with XRP. So for those of you guys who don't understand the payments, this is pretty pretty straightforward. I'm just, I kind of breeze through this one. The second one is the one that I thought was really interesting, but let's just uh, kind of talk about this. When transacting XRP in the future and when using it through your traditional banking system, uh, it's basically going to be in the background, okay? Similar to how we interact as Swift as customers, which is pretty much non-existent. Our bank does it for us. The same thing is going to happen with XRP. So he gives a bit of a description on that. And I will link this in the description of this video for you guys if you want to go through it in more detail. But listen to this. A lot of discussion on X about XRP price and how it will or will not rise in price. Let me offer some info on what will happen when banks are using XRP to sell, uh, settle large transactions on a daily basis. To understand the price of XRP, uh, XRP, first you need to understand the utility calculated. Okay, so market cap and utility, not the same. Utility asset prices in XRP determined by value and volume on the ledger. So we have to understand, guys, deep liquidity. This is where uh, banks will really thrive. This is where Ripple will really thrive. Two deep liquidity pools to pull value uh, or else the transaction would fail. So they need deep liquidity and therefore they need the price to be high. Banks cannot afford to let uh, to let these transactions fail. It is costly and causes many issues. So deep liquidity is a must. Now, just to get an idea, Bank of America, SBI, JP Morgan, all those banks, they settle a combined approximately 25 to $30 trillion on a daily basis. Let's say 10%, only 10% is going through XRP. So that is, let's say $3 trillion on the ledger, for example. The liquidity pool would need to be able to double that to avoid friction between counterparties and not risk a failed transaction. And so this is just for institutions. Remember, Ripple has 1,700 plus NDAs. The numbers I gave you are just an example of a few big ones, but guys, just imagine the size of these transactions eventually as they move forward. The key to XRP price will be the value and volume on ledger by these institutions to handle their daily transactions and the depth of the liquidity pools to avoid failed transactions and ensure counterparties are always available no matter what currency is used. He goes on to say, you know, retail doesn't matter, which is why retail doesn't move the price at all. And I think, you know, in a in a spec market, we can see retail moving the price. But guys, the the, the when they say the charts don't matter, the, the charts do matter in a spec market. But when they say charts don't matter, it won't matter once uh, once XRP is actually being utilized in a real world framework. And so this is what gets me really excited. On top of which, let's just go back to this first tweet thread for a second. Uh, he talks a little bit about the price in terms of transaction fees and the fact that transacting with XRP only costs around 0 0.00001 XRP per transaction. So, you know, the, the fact that it costs fractions of pennies, I mean, one 
hundred thousandth of a penny or ten thousandth of a penny. I, I don't know what that fraction is, but you got to think to yourself, why, how is it that they're, they're making the transaction fees so little? I mean, you can make it 0.1 of an XRP or even one XRP, right? Even if the transaction fee was only 50 cents. Well, I think you see where I'm going with this or rather where crypto tank is going with this. And what he's saying, guys, is as the value does rise. So let's say XRP is worth uh, $10,000 per coin. Well, now one XRP transaction is going to be worth one cent, give or take. I mean, if we take out the uh, the zeros there, that brings uh, 0. 0.00001 XRP down to 0. 0.01 XRP. Uh, so a 10 cent transaction instead of a fraction of a penny transaction. Now say user B wants to send user C $1,000 uh, and you guys can do the math from there. So the amount of drops, this goes back to the uh, $10,000 XRP theory. The amount of drops, the amount of decimal spaces for XRP guys, it can be divisible to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the architects did this on purpose. If you go back and listen to David Schwartz's story here, which I did not play in this video, I think you can see why they had to get the XRPL perfect, knowing fully well what it was going to be used for in the future. And, you know, whether it's a fraction of a penny or even one cent, even 10 cents per transaction, guys, what they're estimating is an XRP getting up towards four or five digits one day. That's just my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.